Praise the Lord, dear friend. Thomas Matthew, the fourth year. I have uh, been meditating on spiritual authority, what it takes to be powerful in this earth and in this life. And I came to discover more about our connection with the Father and also our connection with those that have gone before us that we would consider earthly fathers and especially I want to deal with spiritual fathers. Again, I said this before that uh, you can have a natural father that can help you with a lot of things but unless he's a very spiritual man in other words, born again and filled with the Holy Ghost which many are not he can't take you into the world of the spirit where God is uh, wanting to move. So you need a, a, an apostle, a coach, a prophet, a pastor who becomes like a father because they care for you. I don't want to say it's easy to have the, the depths of God in somebody to care for people because it's a long process. A lot of adversity, a lot of heartache, a lot of pain, a lot of trials and tribulations, you know, things that like break you in the natural mold of things and then <laughs> you you feel the love of God for people you know I feel that it's another point you you really have to be a a good son if you want to be a great father but you also need to be a good son or or daughter to a father that you can then be blessed by the blessing that's upon the man can come upon you. You know, when God decides to walk with someone and cut covenant with them and be with them, it's not a joke. It's a long-term thing. It's a long process. And when you see the realms of maturity that come through, uh, you know, a life of power that somebody's walking in, you want to connect with that. Proverbs chapter 10, I want us to look at that wise sayings of Solomon, some of them. The Proverbs of Solomon, continuing. A wise son makes a glad father, but a, a foolish son is the grief of his mother. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing. And it goes on to say many things. Uh, verse 4, he that deals with a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes one rich. So we need to see that blessings are on the head of the righteous, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. You see these people out uh, doing crazy things right now. None of them are saved. None of them know God. They're just they're messed up. Welcome you all that are coming on, and please do share this. I'm going to continue here, and I'm going to talk to you after the broadcast. And uh, those of you that are partners that are sowing, I welcome that. I celebrate that. It means the world to me that people connect and participate with the love of the Father that's coming through this Father to you and to the nations of the world. As you help us in the world mission, the Lord looks at that. He's going to bless his favor will produce what you can never produce for yourself. You want that. And, you know, once you understand, a lot of people don't understand it yet. They've been taught it, they've heard it, but they don't do it enough. And they don't get the benefit of it. You know, the, the law of seed time and harvest, it really works. I heard a man, a uh, friend, a friend in the ministry in America, he was saying that uh, five, just five years ago, a few years ago, he couldn't even hardly afford plane tickets for his uh, wife and his daughter and, or his, you know, himself, never mind doing anything else. And he wanted to get his wife down to a meeting he was doing, so he, he hired a private jet and got a Falcon jet to take them down and their favorite food already there on the plane and take them right to where he was staying in a beautiful house right on the ocean front, right on the beach. And that's where he's staying, swimming every day in the ocean, going back in able to charter a plane to have his wife come down. He says, I couldn't do that. But he said, around that time, I began to stumble on the laws of seed time and harvest and 
really begin to operate in it, and he does. I mean, treme- in tremendous ways. And now he's he's bringing millions of dollars are coming into his ministry, not thousands, millions. Was it an accident? Was it just because he can preach good? Because he's a nice guy and has the call of God and has a good intention? No, a lot of people have good intentions of the call of God, but they don't operate according to the principles. So you need to be connected with a man who's anointed. You need to be connected with uh, operating in the laws of sowing and reaping. You need to connect with God in the ways of the laws that, that he's given us to prosper. It's not so God can get something from you. You know, like I look at myself, I don't ever think about... I, it's been so many years I couldn't remember if I ever did. Maybe I never did. To think about, you know, provision and money. It's just there. I'm a very blessed man. I'm good. I'm okay. So when you're sowing, you're tapping into a realm of overflow. You want the overflow in your life? Hey, it's going to come like that. I don't know why the Lord, you know, I'm, 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 I'm trying to teach on this message. And as soon as I start... The Holy Ghost starts talking about seed because he's challenging people. Not the, Please don't think that... I didn't plan to say that. I say that unabashedly with integrity from my heart before God, Almighty God. I fear him. I reverence him. I didn't plan to say that. But the Holy Ghost is talking here to people. You want to come out of poverty, you need to sow. You need to tithe first. Many are tithing our way. If you're tithing uh, into this spiritual house, hey, great. And then after that, you give and you sow. So the the tithe is not a seed. It's a, it's something you pay God. It's his percentage, you know. And then after that, your seed is going to produce the flow. Now, we proved that by, that's proven by Malachi 3, 10 to 12, in, or 8, Malachi 3 verse 8, in tithes and offerings, he said, people have robbed him. So carry on giving nothing, trying to take, trying to get, crying. You, you, you'll you stay in that cycle. I want to help you break out of that. You want to be a millionaire? Somebody nod your head and say yes. I'm talking to you as a father now. Continuing in this, bless, the blessing of the father. This is volume 4 or 5. Well... No, it's volume four. And I just feel to contain the whole the Holy Ghost birthed this on Sunday, on Father's Day. And I'll continue till I'm done. You know, I know I probably won't be too long, but in this series, but we're we're gonna go with it. Now you want to be blessed. You need to listen to the Father to talk to you, to help you, give you some advice and follow it. You need to sow. Now everything's a seed. Whatever you, here's a definition of a seed. Anything you can do that will benefit the life of another. Anything that you have or have access to, that when you give it to someone else and bless someone else with that, the ministry here, you have things to give to someone to help to, you do gestures of kindness to people, those are all seeds Anything you have that will benefit the life of another, my God, I feel this, is a seed. And God sees it, and he will see to it that you get the harvest back. Ephesians 6, 8 says, whatever good thing you do for another, the same the Lord will do for you. Whatever you do, and the golden rule is do unto others as you, Jesus said, do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. So that's the golden rule. But the promise was in, in Ephesians 6, 8. 6, 8, Ephesians. Whatever good thing you do for another, the Lord will do that for you. And he always does it multiplied. When you pity the poor and help them too, God says you lend to him and he'll repay. Does God repay, just throw it back at you, just what you gave? No, he's going to add blessings to it. He's always going to add to it. He's generous. Proverbs 11.25, going on in the wise sayings of Solomon. Proverbs 11.25 says, The generous one will become like a well-watered garden himself or herself. The generous one. 
the generous person will become like a well-watered garden. Growing. Genesis 8.22 said the law of seed time and harvest, is never, it never ceases. I sow, I'm sowing. I've sown several things this week. I've sown several things last week. I sowed several things the week before. And I see the floodgates opening within minutes and hours. Sometimes you use a certain uh, PayPal or Cash App or whatever, and you're doing things, and then as you're doing them, it just fills back up. Like you can't diminish the supply. The minute you give out, you see it just gets replenished back again. That happens for me every day. Why? Because I'm a giver. I bought some clothes that were not my favorite. I bought a, a few things of each and I found, I looked for one that wasn't really something that I was going to use. And I got them on sale anyway, because maybe I have some of that royal... Uh, old country blood in me from over there, you know what I mean? Get things for wholesale, not retail. An old Jewish saying was, we, play, we pay wholesale, we work with each other, but the Goyim, they call them Goyim, which means the, uh, the Gentiles, they pay retail. But we don't pay retail, we pay wholesale. So there was a kid that was about my size, and I found a suit, shirt, a suits and shirts, ties, and uh, I can't remember if I gave him ties, but a suit and shirt, definitely, and, a, and like two pairs of shoes. One brand new, brand new, never worn. And he just said he loved them. Young guy in Bible school. Look at that. I didn't even put him in his hand. I had somebody working with me, and uh, they were part of the church there, and they, gave, they brought them to him. I didn't even have to get that involved. Look for stuff in my garage to give away. Give it away. Look look for stuff to give. I remember I gave a dining set to uh, someone in the church. A whole with dining set with chairs and other things. I've given cars away. Oh, here we go. I've not even, never talk about this. I've given away. Listen to me. Look at me now. I've given away about 14 cars. One four. Vehicles. I very rarely sell vehicles. When I'm done with them, I give them. Now, there's a couple of times I sold, one time I sold a, a car and uh, it, 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 you know, over, it became a squabble with an apostle because I was out of the country and he had a missionary guy uh, somewhere else that wanted to buy it. And then, you know, it became like an argument, like over a few hundred dollars, there was some miscalculation, some miscommunication. And the guy, you know, was a hot-blooded Italian and he started going, I thought I never said... I don't care about that. Just forget it. But it became like a thing. I said, I just wish I had taken the thing and sewn it. That's one I sold that I, re I didn't like doing it. Didn't like selling it. Became like a, a, a headache anyway. So I've given so many cars away. Oh, man. And I've been giving cars. I give them away. So I have car miracles going all the, all the time. Whenever the Lord leads me to talk about that, there's a car miracle coming. You, you want a car, miracle, you need a vehicle in your life? Stretch your hand out toward me right now. I prophesy and I declare right now that car miracles, vehicle miracles are coming to you in Jesus' name. Receive it right now. Business miracles are coming. But you're going to reap a, a, a multiplied return back on what you sow. And I feel like that's just what the Lord wanted me to talk about. You need his favor. You need his honor. You need his blessing. You need his touch. And I've been talking about this seed. I had an open vision about 77. I think you've heard me talk about that. If you want to sow that or you have another amount, God will be speaking you to sow into this anointing. Uh, the Lord is going to do something great for you. And I also want to send you a gift of the laws of success in my ebook. This is a printed book, but by ebook or the benefits of excellence, whichever one you tell me you want as you're sowing into this work. So the Lord is uh, doing great things. I'm, I'm reminded of so many people that have been blessed. I, I just want to say this in a quick, in a quick way here for these just few moments. The Lord is going to bless you. He's going to honor you. He's going to show you favor. But you got to work His principles. You got to do His things. 
You got to be diligent, but you also have to be diligent in sowing. Make sure you're working the biblical economic system. And then he'll make things work for you. In Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Smith IV. I'm praying for you to get rich. I'm praying for you to be successful. I'm praying for you to prosper. And I'm declaring it so over you right now. In Jesus' name. I'll see you on the next broadcast. I'm praying for you. Looking to hear from you. Direct message me your prayer requests. Send me by WhatsApp. The ways to sow and tap the grace of this anointing are in the heading of the title and also in the comments. And you can have you have many ways to sow seed into this anointing. And the reason for it all is that you get blessed. That is the reason for it all. That you're doing business with God, a transaction with God, and he's going to answer by fire and bless your life. Do you believe that? I declare it over you in Jesus' name. And I love you much, and I'm continuing to pray for your prosperity and breakthrough in this season of time. In Jesus' name, waiting to hear from you and love you much. Talk to you on the next broadcast.